Hello lovely people, Deep in Inspiration Hub here. Today I'm coming to you with a new video on how to set up your Atto Relay on a Raspberry Pi 4. So I pushed out already other videos how you can do this for instance using the VPS which would be whist, um, sorry, hosted elsewhere which would mean that you would have to be paying periodically for it, a monthly fee. And um, I also pushed out a second option where you would host this yourself at home on your PC. And today I'm coming to you with a third option how you can do this with a Raspberry Pi 4. So the advantage with the Raspberry Pi 4 for instance in comparison to using your PC is that the Raspberry Pi 4 takes really relatively very very low um, energy in contrast to using a mini PC for instance right now um, the second advantage if you'll be using your PC for instance is that maybe you have your PC running other applications which is constantly on the whole time so installing the Atom node on it doesn't make a much difference for you but if you are running exclusively the atom node on your on your mini pc i think it's not a bad idea to go with a raspberry pi approach so here i have just two pictures of my raspberry pi so this is how it was delivered basically you have the motherboard um, the main board and um, which comes with two u four usb ports so two usb 2 and 3.0 another two normal usb ports and also you have um an rj45 connector here where you can connect a network cable like you see in my picture so i also bought an enclosure to enclose the whole um setup that i have i think it's not a bad idea because the enclosure comes with a, a heat sink and a cooling fan right so i think it's very nice it's very very important to keep the longevity of the raspberry pi to install the fan on it to, to cool it up when it's heating up right and also what i also saw is that without the fan the raspberry pi heats up pretty quickly right so it's, it wasn't a bad idea to get a, the enclosure which came with the fan and this wasn't not that expensive i think it was about 10 to 15 euros or so and i think compared to the advantage that it would bring this is a very very good option so i would highly recommend um to go to this approach i also bought as uh, the original power supply that is delivered with the raspberry pi i bought this optionally as well um but i think i learned that other usb standard usb cables would also work but in the case where you are plugging high power devices to it i think it's not a bad idea to go with the original power supply so that you wouldn't have any um power supply issues when running the raspberry pi so that's just for the introduction I mean, this setup that I'm going to be doing, I'm not going to, I'm going to be running the Raspberry Pi on a LAN, on an Ethernet cable, but you can also do this on a wireless. So um, just this approach I'm using because I have this um, setup readily available with me at home. Um, there's one software that we're going to need and that software is called the Raspberry Pi Imager. So you can download this from raspberrypi.com slash software. You basically have to scroll down and if you're using a Mac, you download this for Mac OS. If you're using Ubuntu, for Ubuntu because I'm using the Windows here I'm going to download this for Windows so I will put the links to the software also um, in the description of the video so that you can download this and use this anytime you like to do so in the next stage I'm just going to go into the downloads folder and run the setup so this is how the installation setup looks I mean it's pretty pretty easy to install here all you have to do is just click install and the process is also pretty quick so you can see the image is already installed so I can run the image. But before I would run this, I would, so you would also need, I'm sorry if I forgot to mention, of course you would need a, um, a USB um, storage device because that is where you're going to be installing the Ubuntu server, right? So in my case, I'm using a 128 gigabytes Sandex USB, I'm sorry, Sandex uh, memory card, but I think technically any good memory card should do so in my case i just bought 128 because the price difference was not that much so i, I i'm now going to put in the, the usb into sorry the memory card into my um pc and then i'll run the raspberry pi imager so now i've put in the memory card so i can run the raspberry pi imager software so now um you have three options where you select the raspberry pi device that you have the operating system and the storage so now for the raspberry pi device and um, what i would like to also show you is that so currently i'm using the raspberry pi 4 and um, because the raspberry pi 5 doesn't support the ubuntu server 22.04 so for instance if i select raspberry pi 5 and i go to choose the operating system down here you see that when you go to general purpose operating system and you select Ubuntu, you currently only see the Ubuntu desktop 23.0 and the Ubuntu server 23.10. So you do not see the op option to install the recommended 22.04 um, from the Atto Educ page. So if you are in doubt, you can always go to the Educator page from Atto. And then when you go to um, the operating system, you see that it says install Ubuntu server 22.04. 
um, I got to know that you can also do this with a Raspberry Pi, but you would like, you would have to install a Docker and then you can install the, the lower version of the Ubuntu on it. So uh, whilst waiting, I would say that please like and subscribe to this video. So I put in a lot of energy um, in recording these videos. So for instance, I do not need the Raspberry Pi for any purpose um, at the moment, but I bought also the Raspberry Pi 4 and the Raspberry Pi 5 just for the sake of the tutorial to also show people how to do this. So currently, I'm going to do this with the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm currently working on learning how to do this with a Docker and would push out another video on how to do with the Raspberry Pi 5. So I'm going to select the Raspberry Pi 4, like I said, because that's what I have currently set up. And for the operating system, um, technically you're going to scroll down to the other general purpose operating system. And then you're going to select Ubuntu. And then you're going to scroll down, right? We are looking for Ubuntu Server 22.04. So don't get confused. The first time I did it, I chose Ubuntu Desktop because it was 22.04. But remember, there are two types. There is Ubuntu Desktop and there is a Ubuntu Server. And then what we are looking for is Ubuntu Server 22.04. And here also, there are two um, versions of it you have the 20 32 bits and then you have the 64 bit so my raspberry pi 4 is a 64 bit um, processor so i'm going to select ubuntu server 22.04.4 lts 64 bits and then in the next stage you're going to select which memory card that you want to use to do the installation and here it's very very important make sure that you select the right memory card that you don't end up flashing under storage that you would not like to do so in my case it's very easy because i currently have the usb um, card or the memory card plugged in and that is the only only card that has this 122 gigabytes um, memory card so it's very easy to do this so i'm going to select this in this case and then i'm going to click on next now this stage here is very very important in the sense that um, we're not going to be connecting any monitor to the raspberry pi we're going to do this from the back end so now because we're going to do this for the back end it means that we're going to try to um, log in into the raspberry pi from the ssh terminal now to do this click on edit settings it's very very important because if you do not do this you can't connect to the raspberry pi and then here you're going to set a host name so in my case i just put in atto and then so if you don't have this checked um, just click on this to enable it and then type in the host name that you, you would like to use and this would be the name of the device that you would also see under your router under set username and password um, for the sake of this video I'm just going to put in pi and also for the password I'm going to put in pi and then if you have a wireless connected to your or if your PC is connected to a wireless network automatically it fills this section for you right but if not the case, you can click configure wireless LAN and then you put in the SSID of your wireless network and then, then the password of your wireless network as well. But in this case, like I told you in the beginning, I'm going to run this over um, an Ethernet cable. So technically, I do not need this wireless LAN setup. So you put in your host name, which is just going to be the name of the device that you would like to host and also the username and the password. So the username and password, I reiterate this is very, very important because without these two, you can't access the back end of the raspberry pi and then you would go to services and then under services if the enable ssh is not enabled you're going to click on enable to enable this and automatically it selects use password authentication under options you can choose to play a sound when it is finished i would eject the media when it is finished and also enable telemetry is selected by default i'm going to leave this the same and then what you're going to do is to just so if you want, you can also configure the time settings. I'll leave this as a default. I wouldn't change anything there. And I'm just going to click on save. And then it's going to ask you, would you like to apply always customization settings? So these are the customization settings are just what we put in under the settings options. So we would like to put this in. So we're going to click yes. And then it's going to warn you again, like I said before, it's going to work, it's going to format the memory card. So it's very important to ensure that you selected the right memory card um, in the initial setup. So in my case, I'm pretty sure this is the right one. So I'm going to click on yes. And then basically it's going to go through the process, it's going to prepare the drive and it's going to start writing the operating system onto the memory card that I selected. And at the end of the writing period, it's also going to do a verification to make sure that the verification you have the right files installed in the memory card. So I'm going to speed this up so that you don't have to sit through the entire process to see how long this will take. So now as you can see, it says the write was successful. Ubuntu server has been written on that USB device. So here I'm using, it says USB because the adapter is plugged into a USB 
um, device and it says you can safely remove the SD card from the reader. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the SD card from the USB reader and I'm going to install this into the Raspberry Pi and I'm going to power on the device. So now I've loaded the memory card into my um, Raspberry Pi and the next stage we're going to connect to the Raspberry Pi using the PowerShell. So I'm going to click on start and then I'm going to type in PowerShell. Right, this is the Windows PowerShell. I'm just going to press enter to load this up. Now at this stage, it's very, very important that you know which IP address is assigned to your Raspberry Pi, right? So in my case, um, I just logged into my router and I could find what the what the um, IP address is. If you do not know this, I think you can also install, I got to know that you can, or I read that you can install an IP scanner, like Angry IP scanner also, which technically scans your network and tells you which IP address is assigned to um, which device. So in my case, I know this already because I could log in into my router, which is the easiest way. So then you go to, going to type in SSH, then space, then you're going to type in the username that you put in when we were setting this for the first time. You remember we had to put in a username and a password where in my case, I just type in pi for the username and a password. So here you're going to type your username, which is pi for me. Then I'm going to type in my IP address. So my IP address assigned to the Raspberry Pi is 192.168.1.3. I'm going to press enter. And then it's going to ask me for my password. So I'm just going to put in pi because that's the same password that I use. I'm going to press enter. And technically you see that uh, this is loaded and we are into the back end of the Ubuntu server. And in the next stage, we're going to proceed to install um, the Anon software or the Anon, um, um, how do you call it, package. Now, I did this a bit differently. So at this stage, I just went into my router setting and I activated the port forwarding for this particular device. So in my case, I know the device was 192.168.1.3. So I just went into my router and already activated the port 9001. So if I think if you've been with Atom for some time, you know that you need to enable the port 9001, which is the default port in order to allow your relay to be able to communicate with the at all back end so the port number doesn't have to be 9001 but if you don't put in anything that is going to be the default so i just went into my router and i enabled port forwarding for my raspberry pi which is the 9001 right so now when this is done um just come into the educator page and then you as you can see here everything is well instructed here i'm going to go down and um, i'm going to go to so under software you see there is install Anon on Linux. So I'm just going to click on this and then all we're going to need is this command here. So I'm just going to click on copy to command, copy this command. I'm going to go to my PowerShell and then when you are here, just press the right or let me say the right click on your, on your, on your mouse. So not the normal um, click that you do, but the right click. And when you do this, it technically paste in whatever you copied into the clipboard. And then I'm going to press enter to install this. So it's going to ask you for your password. I'm going to put in my password again. And after that, you're going to press enter. So here's where the magic is happening. So technically it's now installing the, the Anon package onto the Raspberry Pi. I mean, this typically doesn't take that long. I'm just going to wait for this to be fully installed. Okay, so now the Anon package is installed. So you can see here, it's starting to ask for the information to set up the device. So it's asking for a nickname. I'm going to put it in the pin inspiration hub right and then it's going to ask for so i'm just going to press when you're done just press enter i'm going to minimize this to make it a bit easier and then it's going to ask for your contact information so at this stage your contact information is going to be your email address which is going to be appended or dedicated to your um, anon relay so that if there's any communication required with respect to your relay this would be the channel of communication so i'm going to put in my email address um just a test because of for the sake of this video test.com and then when you are done with your email address just press enter in the next stage is going to ask you so if you have multiple relays running you would have to declare this as a family right so if, in the case where i'm doing this at least for a test that i have no other relays running i would just skip this step by just pressing enter so just press enter don't put it in there just press enter and then here you're going to declare how much bandwidth you want to allocate to your relay i'm not going to put this in anything here but if you have an invitation with respect to your bandwidth i think it's, it's a good idea um, to limit how much resource in terms of your internet bandwidth you would like to allocate to the auto relay like i said i'm going to keep this at the default for now i'm going to press enter and also the same thing for the bandwidth burst i'm going to press just enter 
and then here it's gonna ask the ports that i would like to allocate to my relay like i said the default is 9001 so if you don't put in anything here and you press enter it's going to be 9001 but for instance in the case where you have multiple auto relays running at home you technically would have to use for every device a different port so maybe you can use 901 9001 for the first relay 9002 for the second relay and stuff like that and in this case you would have to put in what the port number is so in my case uh, this is the only relay that i have currently running so i'm not going to put in anything i'm just going to press enter now so you can see it says that the anon relay completed successfully now in the next stage we're going to install a, um, a package that is called nice and this would allow us to have more of a graphical um idea of what is happening at the back end um, with our relay so still on the educator page um, you're just going to go to frequently ask questions and then you're going to come to how to install nice mon for monitoring in Debian. and then here you're going to copy this command to install the package so click on copy come to the powershell and just right click to paste it and just press enter very good so now you see that the package is installed we didn't have any problems so no service needs to be started i mean if your screen looks like this technically um you're good to go and what we're gonna do now to enter to see what is happening from a graphical interface is to type sudo nice so sudo n y x this is also on the auto educate edu educator page you see that it tells you to install this and after that you run sudo nice so that's technically the same command that I, I, I put in here and after that you're going to press enter as you can see we were successful in installing the anon relay on the out raspberry pi 4 so i'm just going to wait a little bit to make sure that everything is running correctly so you can see here so six threes so the time here at 36 36 seconds it says that self-testing indicates that my port for six at my IP address or my gateway address or my public IP address is reachable from outside and it sells excellent. I mean, this is a very rewarding thing when I see this excellent. So technically what this means is that the port forwarding that I activated is working and that is why in my tutorial, I recommend that so long as you know what the IP address is gonna be for your relay, go into your back end and put it in before you even install the anon package thanks a lot for tuning in to this part of the video and um, in the next stage what i would highly recommend is to set up an automated monitoring of your ATO relay so i put a video about this on my youtube channel so this is my youtube channel Deepin inspiration hub so when you come here and you go under videos you would see this video here which is called automated monitoring of your ATO node online status i would highly recommend that you do this you follow this video and do this as well because i mean it's a lot of hassle if you would have to log in every time to see that the connectivity is happening I and mean, i also explained a lot in this video the concept of the port forwarding so i would highly recommend that you do this as well for your relay at least to know each time that it really is working correctly thanks a lot for watching this video i hope um you were able to install this as well at your end if you do have any questions during the installation of the actual relay on your raspberry pi 4 please put this in the comment section and i'll very happy to help you out thanks a lot once again and see you in the next video bye